So I'm going to be vulnerable with you guys again, and I'm going to share a struggle that I've had. Um, not anymore, but I've had it for a while. And uh, the devil was just using this tactic against me. You know, he has like little weapons in his weaponry, you know, like his little arsenal that he pulls out at different occasions. He knows what buttons to push with us. And for months on end, I would every single night, and there's no basis for this because my husband is so, so faithful, but I would keep having dreams every single night that he was cheating on me. And I would wake up distraught, sad, freaked out, in a bad mood. Um, and I remember one night, it was so bad. I woke up and it was just so bad, this attack on my marriage. And I call, or I texted my, my mentor, Sylvia. Okay, and y'all, she is just filled with wisdom. And she is ready to rebuke me and correct me when I need it. And that's the kind of friends you need. And that's the kind of mentor you need. If you don't have a mentor, get a mentor. In the multitude of counselors, there is safety. That's what the Bible says. So anyways, I text her and I'm like telling her about this. And she's like, Jackie, the devil is seeing that this tactic, this weapon keeps working on you. So why is he, you know, why is he going to change up his weaponry? You know, you need to, sub you need to first, the Bible says, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you right? You cannot resist the devil until you first submit to God. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So I was not submitting to God in the sense that I was not picking up the weapons that God has given me to fight. And she told me, Jackie, you need to use uh, the power of thanksgiving like thank god for your husband how wonderful he is how you're blessed to have him he's a gift from god and use that against the enemy start praising the lord because when you praise the lord you take your mind and your eyes off the circumstances and onto god who is faithful and the devil is a liar right and he uses dreams against us it's part of warfare but she said jackie when you overcome an attack or you overcome uh, you know, uh, you know, one of the plots of the enemy or a test from the enemy, um, <clears throat> you are going to be able to move on, right? And he's not going to use that anymore. He's going to have to find another one to use. But when you are continuously having the same attacks, it's because you have not overcome it with the Lord, the devil is using the same thing on you because the same thing keeps on working. And what's that saying? You know, uh, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Right? We, 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 and we also, we give the devil the benefit of the doubt. Thinking that, oh, maybe he's telling the truth this time. No, he's not. He's not telling the truth. So, um, you know, and like I've said the, before, the, the, the battlefield is in the mind. Right? And, um... Finally, you know, she said, don't let that, you know, recognize it's from the devil and, and, and fight against it. Praise the Lord. Thank him and say, wait a minute, this is from the father of lies. I'm not going to receive this. And a lot of times we have that with thoughts. Oh, you're not beautiful. You look in the mirror. Oh, you're never going to get a husband. You're ne never going to get a wife. You think that, that that voice is the Lord? No, it's not. It's the devil. And you need to recognize the difference between the devil and God and yourself. So, you know, we cannot, sub we cannot resist the devil before we submit to God. So what does that mean? I mean, Jesus submitted to God. He submitted to what God wanted him to do, not what he wanted to do. I'm sure that when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, in his humanity, in his flesh, he didn't want to go to the cross. And he, he it, it's true because he said, Lord, if you can make this cup pass from me, let it pass from me. If there's another way I can save humanity, right? He's probably thinking, please give it to me. But nonetheless, let your will be done. He was submitted to God completely. He was obeying God. He was trusting him. And when God, the Holy Spirit, sent him, led him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil 40 days and 40 nights, his, his obedience and his submission to God was tested. But it was because he had already been submitted to God that he was able to resist the devil's temptations, right? Um... And it was because, you know, Jesus knew the word of God 
and knew the truth that when these lies would come, because every temptation came with a lie, if you read that, that you know, that part of uh, the Bible, every temptation in that wilderness uh, was coupled with a lie from the devil, but he would come back and say, it is written, and he would quote scripture because that's the truth, right? And the word of God is the sword of the spirit. So, you know, a lot of times we want the perks of a relationship with God, right? We want the blessings. We want the promises. We want the financial blessing. Uh, we want the favor with our employers. Um, we want our name secured in the book of life without the need to trust him in unlikely circumstances, in circumstances where the odds are against us. We, we want all the perks without the cost of losing our own life of, you know, suffering for his name, being persecuted for his name, uh, daily picking up our cross, denying ourselves and following him and getting rid of all the sin in our life and changing our lifestyle. We don't, we want like a, a you know, God with benefits kind of relationship without the commitment. You know, we want God to commit to us, but we don't want to commit to God. We want God to serve us, but we're not willing to serve God. We want God to bless us, but we're not willing to bless the Lord. And uh, like I've said before, we act like God is our servant. And truthfully, we are the servant. <laughs> Even though he is a servant leader, he serves us, you know, in his humility and his greatness. Um, you know, we a lot of times we see God as a means to our own end, our genie. And our servant and when we don't get what we want from God or if we don't get a, a, a prayer answered and we get angry at God that is a clear indication that we are idolizing what we've been praying for that is a clear indication that we are uh, basically looking for God for what he can give us not because of what he's already given us on the cross um So if you're, if you're disobedient to God, right, if you're not submitted to God, you're not going to be able to resist the devil. If you have open doors to the enemy, right, if, you know, you're trying to overcome lust, but you have open doors, you're not submitted to God in the sense that you're not seeking him. You're not reading his word. You're not, uh, you know, taking the steps you need to take, like unfollowing the girls on Instagram, right? If you, if you have uh, anger issues, but you're not... Um, you don't put a stop to your mouth and put a guard over your mouth and stop talking about how Susie's with her boyfriend doing X, Y, and Z, you know, and, and stopping all of the, um, you know, poison that com comes out of your mouth, you know, you're going to continue to have a hateful heart and have uh, anger issues and have anger spurts. You know, you need to recognize where you need to change and close those doors to the enemy. Um... You know, if you're not following Jesus into the pearly gates, you're following the devil into the lake of fire, right? If you're not submitted unto God, you're submitted unto the devil. It's one or the other. And, oh, man, sorry, guys, hold on one second. I don't want to miss anything here. So, you know, the Bible says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So, you know, we, a lot of times we're, we're just, we're, we're very double-minded. We say, you know, I, I trust the Lord, let's say in one area, but not in the other area. I trust the Lord with finances, but I don't trust the Lord um, to, uh, you know, um, bring me the right friends or bring me the right person. So I'm going to go date a bunch of people and get on Bumble and get on Hinge and get on Coffee Meets Bagel. Um, you know, we can't say we trust God in one area, but we don't trust him in the other. We have to trust God fully in every single area. So sometimes the enemy has been using the same tactics with you because you have not overcome these attacks. It's the same tactic. You know, the same people asking you to come out and party. It's, you know, you haven't put that boundary there and, and heeded the word of God that says, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good character. And you wonder why you keep finding yourself in the club every Friday night. Um, 
you know, the devil keeps using the same tactics, you know, and um, you have to overcome this test. And of course, there's always a battle with the devil until our last breath. But regardless, um, we can overcome through the power of the Holy Spirit. And when we let God fight and we submit to God, we just need to resist the devil. And he's going to flee. He's going to flee. It's going to happen. He's going to flee. But to let the devil fool us twice, come on. So when I wake up from one of those dreams and I still get them, I'm like, okay, whatever, brushing it off because I know who it's coming from. It's the devil. I recognize it. I praise the Lord and I thank God for my husband. And that's it. So do not let the devil fool you twice. Recognize, try to sit down with the Lord, you know, and say, okay, is there any patterns here where I keep falling? Is there any patterns of temptation? What is, what, what is the enemy really using against me? What are his the weapons in his arsenal for me specifically? And how can I identify them and fight against them, you know, with the Lord? Uh, so I hope this video helps somebody. And um, yeah, just know the victory is yours in Jesus' name.